Yes. So let us come back and learn the structure of proteins. So we very well know when we speak about proteins, protein is a series of amino acids arranged and joined by peptide bonds. That is what we've learned. So whenever a long chain protein or a polypeptide chain has to form, one amino acid is again linked to the other amino acid. As I said, first you're going to start with the N terminus and then go with the uh, C terminus, correct? In between each amino acid, when, uh, there's a removal of water and it forms a peptide bond. So first learn the peptide bond and then come back to this topic that is classification of proteins now when i speak about proteins basically based on their structure this is the classification based on the structure means how is it a straight chain uh, polypeptide chain or it is a coiled or it is a uh, pleated structure or <coughs> it is double pleat i mean uh, double coiled or further uh, coiled the secondary structure coiled so based on the structure proteins are classified into primary structure of proteins, secondary structure of proteins and it is again divided into tertiary and quaternary also. So once I am done with this, I will go to the tertiary and quaternary. So again secondary structure is divided or it is again classified into alpha helix. That means the the protein or the amino acid, they coil the alpha right handed helical structures. Yes, we will be doing that. Next is beta pleated structure. Okay. So what did I do? I made a tabular column for all these. So when you are learning for your exam, try to memorize this tabular column so that everything, all the details will be in this tabular column. right? So when I speak about <coughs> primary structure of proteins, so in primary structure of proteins, how is the arrangement of uh, amino acid? If I say arrangement of amino acid, means I will just say it is a primary structure means it is a sequential arrangement <laughs> sequential arrangement of amino acids so what did i say how did amino acids linked with one after the other is linked by peptide bonds linked by peptide bonds simple right and how should i see peptide bond how does this look actually suppose i said that 20 essential amino acids basically when we studied so 20 amino acids with, uh, which are present not essential 20 amino acids which are present so among that suppose if i speak about primary alignment <coughs> yes so suppose i said we have to start first with which terminus n terminus correct so in n terminus after that you have one amino acid for example methionine after that this is linked to alanine one after that it is linked with leucine again it is linked with isoleucine again it is linked with arginine like that a series of amino acids they form a sequence one after the other ending now this goes on like this and it ends with carbon terminus so this sort of this sort now what happens between this and this there's a peptide bond between this and this peptide bond in that way they are linked and they form a sequential arrangement that is a primary structure so how many residues or how many amino acids are found in primary structure if that if it is asked just remember the minimum number of amino acid or for a protein chain in a protein chain the minimum number of amino acids were observed to be <coughs> 50, 50 amino acid residues to the maximum of recently they have found out in a study the maximum of 30,000 amino acids are also present in the protein chain. 30,000 amino acid residues are also observed. So basically basic arrangement that is your inner sequence is primary structure correct so in this particular chain it can vary from 50 or it can go till 30,000 one after the other arrangement of amino acids with different combinations so every sequence suppose <coughs> if this every uh, suppose it has to code uh, the eye, eyelid or something uh, that has a separate uh, amino acid sequence if uh, the shape of the nail has to be coded that again has a different amino acid sequence so primary structure determines the sequential arrangement. Now when I come to secondary structure, you now what happens in secondary structure, it's basically here it was a straight chain, right? One after the other with peptide bonds. But in secondary, the protein chain is going to either fold up. How? In alpha helix, the protein chain may fold in the form of a right-handed helical structure. See how am I drawing? I'm drawing in right-handed, right? Right. So right-handed helical. The this peptide chain starts coiling. So how is it coiling? Yeah, it's coiling or it's forming. A bond means it is coiling and coiling and uh, coiling. So, <coughs> if I say coiling of polypeptide chain 
polypeptide chain now what do we have in this polypeptide chain we very well know here also there is a peptide bond form here also there is peptide bond just observe see this is your c there is double bond o and you have your n and your h now what do we observe between oxygen and hydrogen yes very important there is a hydrogen bond here i'll make it larger c double bond o there is an hydrogen bond formed between n and h observe again from here if i speak c double bond o again here <coughs> n and h again a double bond in that way again here if i uh, speak n and h again a peptide bond c double bond o. so what are we observing in alpha helical structure the coiling of polypeptide chain occurs with what with formation of hydrogen bonding so hydrogen bonding the most important uh, specialty you have to write this hydrogen bonding in between the amino acid chain here did we observe hydrogen bonding no we didn't observe any hydrogen bonding but here because of the compact structure of the proteins the hydrogen the oxygen and the hydrogen come closer together and they start showing us hydrogen bonding yes now this gives strength to the molecule or no yes this gives particular <coughs> strength or that coiling structure is maintained in form by the hydrogen bonding done now when i speak about the amino acid residues or pairs it is observed that this right handed so for one turn if i go with this one turn for one for one turn almost 3.6 amino acids were observed so one for one particular turn 3.6 amino acid residues were found yes done now once i come back to beta pleated structure so basically in beta pleated structure it is the same polypeptide chain but now what happens one polypeptide chain again forms a zigzag folding again one more forms a zigzag folding how does this look in beta pleated in beta pleated basically all these are suppose polypeptide chain right this one is folding towards this side so this is like this it's folding now this is folding like just like your pleats it's folding again right again like this in this way now one more is folding towards this <coughs> and yes that means all these polypeptide chains one linked with the other one folded to the other that is the reason we call it as beta beta folding and pleated structure just in the form of a pleat right just your pages of your book so what happens here what sort of arrangement are you observing you here also you have amino acids one after the other linked with your c double bond o and hydrogen bonding yes everywhere it's the same but only thing is the arrangement of the structure is coiled here the arrangement of structure is in the form of a pleat just folded in the form of pages right now what do we see it is zigzag arrangement of amino acids right now what sort of bonds okay uh, right fine let us write this how many residues are observed so it was observed that of a minimum of 3 to 10 amino acid residues were observed amino acid residues per turn per acid. so uh, what are we trying to learn here structure or the protein in that protein we have a series of amino acids if the amino acid is folding one after the other in a series i call it as primary structure suppose if it is folding in the form of a coil where do we see this here in our keratin right in a hair a hair structure we find this uh, your alpha helical structure it's basically if it is folding in the form of a helix right handed turn then i call it as primary structure that is your uh, alpha helical structure if the same structure if it is fold, folding in the form of a pleat the same polypeptide chain then i call it as beta pleated structure just in the form of a pleats and these are the um, uh, residues present in them but important thing is when i speak about primary structure what type of bond is formed in the primary structure i say peptide bond is formed now in secondary structure and uh, two types that is alpha and beta what type of bonds we did we find we got we already have peptide bond apart from this we also have hydrogen bonds correct this hydrogen bond is giving strength to that particular molecule or the strength to that particular coiled protein yes so please note it again we'll uh, just learn tertiary and quaternary
yes now let us come back and learn now tertiary and quaternary structures also so when i speak about tertiary and quaternary structures yes it's simple only thing the only difference is in your tertiary there's further coiling of your amino acid now what happens <coughs> now in a primary gradually one amino acid started uh, forming peptide bonds here when i speak about your tertiary structure let us write tertiary right so in this tertiary structure how are the amino acids arranged let us draw the diagram and then you will uh, get to know right so in tertiary structure your amino acid starts further coiling like this further coil yes so you will just write further coiling of which structure primary got coiled into secondary now further coiling of secondary structures further coiling of secondary structure of proteins <coughs> now uh, here amino acids residue if you count it is many right the coiling in coiling in coiling so particular amino acid residue data uh, maybe i'm i'm not sure about this data i can't give you this data but please ask your biology teacher for this data uh, number of amino acid residues for your tertiary important thing what you should remember is what are the type of bonds formed type of bonds formed observe carefully in this coiled structure as we know yes peptide bonds for sure are there correct that is the base a bond formed compulsory apart from this there is a bond formed called disulfide bridges remember very important disulfide s u l f i d e disulfide bridges what are these disulfide bridges yes yes like this even your rubber you have sulfur bridges to increase the strength of that rubber in the same this disulfide bridges also allows or increases the strength of the coil protein coil or the amino acid coil it will not allow or weaken this coil means it will not allow it to demold it will just hold that coil in its position so disulfide bridges increases or it will hold the structure of that amino acid or the protein apart from this there are van der waals forces of attraction acting on them because you have why do we have van der waals forces because you have your carboxylic end and the amino terminal end yes <coughs> both the i means you have both the ions existing so van der waals forces start acting on them apart from that after disulfide bridges you also have just see <coughs> as i said what did i say they have uh hydrogen bonding earlier because your co and nh your co and nh forms hydrogen bonding yes so hydrogen bonding also is observed in tertiary we don't have disulfide bridges in secondary and uh, primary we don't have van der waals forces of attraction secondary because they have ions right they try to hold that coil together so we don't have that but we have peptide bond and hydrogen bond uh, present in them correct there is some other force called observe carefully i will just say it is called hydrophobic and hydrophilic ends okay where did you study this you have studied this hydrophobic and hydrophilic in your grade 10th in missile formation you remember so hydrophobic is fear of water hydrophilic is water loving here also in in terms of proteins very simple the hydrophobic ends are buried inside and the hydrophilic end what are the hydrophilic ends here your co minus and your nh nh3 plus correct so your hydrophilic ends or the ionic ends are exposed out like this so that they when they dissolve in water it easily dissolves that is why we showed the formation of zwitter ion right so the hydrophobic ends are what should i say they are buried inside just like your missile even in your missile what do we draw in the soap molecule all the hydrophobic ends are out arranged one after the other and your hydrophilic ends are exposed out so that it works clearly or it works with your soap molecule correct sodium stearate that is your soap it works easily with your soap and the dirt is removed here also same hydrophobic ends are buried inside this is your hydrophobic end and your hydrophilic ends this is your hydrophilic are exposed out this particular thing right so these are the different forces which are acting in your tertiary structure 
now when i come back to quaternary structure what happens so in your quaternary structure in your quaternary, quaternary 4 degree in your quaternary structure basically it is further coiling of your so in quaternary how is it uh, uh, like how can we see the quaternary structure now this is your tertiary right in quaternary there is further coiling there is no strict rule that you have to draw like that there is further coiling of polypeptide chain so you will write further coiling of polypeptide chain yes done now what type of bonds or what type of uh, forces of attraction all these peptide bond disulfide bridges hydrogen bonding this hydrophilic hydrophobic van der waals forces all the forces the same forces act here so why am i teaching this remember in the exam if they are asking you what are the type of forces acting in the primary structure you should say peptide bond what are the type of forces acting in secondary structure hydrogen bonding what are the type of forces acting in tertiary you have to list all these what are the type of forces acting in quaternary you have to list all this yes so please note this <coughs> if they are asking you because basically structure of protein or the classification of protein is asking they are asking you just draw this tabular column and fill all the details you will be allotted full marks for that